I have set myself up to fail one day. <laughs> big chunky two-piece gliding thing with an offset spinner with a big old willow blade on the top. A beautiful hammered one. I like that. Already have the mold for the tail fin. Nice drawing. I'm, I'm gonna scan this, make copies. Main objective. Why we're building this is to just see what kind of swim can be achieved when you have an offset spinning rig off the front. I was tempted to go this size. We're doing this. <laughs> that just blows things out of proportion. Let's use a typical, you know, the normal stuff. I think I need to pour this now if I have any chance of it being ready by the time this bait's ready. That means the paint of this bait essentially needs to be decided now then. Flex 50. That's my favorite blend. Sparkly diamond gray. And I'm just gonna wet the tip of this stick with some orange and then stir it. So it's gonna have a tint of orange battleship gray. Classy. What a way to start a video. Just pouring a tail thin. Very, very small amount. There, we got the tip with a little bit on it. It's like a silvery sapia, burnt. Silvery burnt sapia. Lots of side scraping. One day. I can never decide. I'm all, I just keep stirring and stirring and stirring. What's the working time on that? Four minutes, what the heck? That's nothing, let's pour. I know I said that I probably wouldn't do any more one days for the rest of the year. I just had to defy that. This is just in defiance to that. That's all that we're doing really. Sorry, person who made this for me. It's been a staple of my lure building career. Those shall meet up nicely. We are going to maintain a very thick head. Gonna try to do a mortised slot for the tail fin here. Giving myself a huge head start with the utility blade and then moving to the Dremel. I had a spare. This isn't what we poured. This was just in a box on my bench over there. It's gonna fit perfect. It's kind of blocky and weird right now, but it's all gonna get carved and I really like how it just disappears into the bait right there. Get some half inch eyes on there. There is everything guiding me as I carve. Need to sharpen my blade. Secret Japanese technique right there. I'll get you later, buddy. You don't even know what's coming. Just hang out for now. Massive amount of weight going in the head. What is this? 14 millimeter. That is not messing around. That's getting awfully close to the 
sides of the bait too. Okay, now a much shallower one is going right there. There's the whole edge, and of course I did not turn on my lead pot, but that'll give me time to carve out gills too. Lead's getting hot. That is some awfully darn close to the lead hole gill plateage. We'll have to be careful. I think the lead's hot. That feels like a lot of lead. 1.7 ounces though. I'll carve the gills, give it the super glue bath, and then just see if that sinks alone. I don't have to give it everything else. I'm gonna run to Hobby Lobby and get my second favorite kind of super glue. I'm all out of this stuff. So we can complete this one day, let's go. It's already 1041. It's completely dark by seven o'clock now too. Let's get some pants on. Okay, we got pants. Got the goods. That stuff. The old stuff. It's been a long time since I overcut a joint right there. It makes no difference after clear coat, you can't tell, but it's that one day energy. <laughs> one day. Caliper set at a quarter inch. Twisting it like that just makes it straight. That's all we need for the joint. This is 0 0.032 inch. Diameter wire, by the way, pretty thin. Perfect. Okay. That's the loose fit with no glue. Let's get to brushing. Super glue just seeps straight into the wood. It's gone. And we're sealed. Where'd that spare tail go? Let's go to my kitchen, fill up a bowl of water, and see how this sinks. Okay, does it sink? Yes. It just Fully submerged, and that doesn't even have all the hardware on it. The head wants to go down hard, that's what we need. That'll keep it stable, I think. Sweet man. So with that knowledge reassuring us that everything's gonna be okay, we can move on. 400 grit, just to remove all that bumpiness, the super, the super glue, uh, or no, 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 no. Nah, 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 nah. Super glue bake soda. Medium thick black super glue. Straight down a pilot hole. Big old screw eye. So this is made out of 0 0.41 inch wire. It's gonna be the line tie and what the blade comes off of. Fold it in half. 
ball bearing swivel. Now here's the line tie. I just stick something in there and bend it around. Then take that and put what you just made in the vise and twist the rest. Trying to find the perfect length. So I think we're gonna glue it in right now. Okay, that was completely overfilled and squished in and there is just glue everywhere in that joint. I'm gonna give that like 10 minutes to set by itself slowly. Time to paint. Being a good bait maker and covering up the wire. That's some good sanding. That's smooth. First color, detail burnt sienna. It just looks like I sprayed orange on it. I might have to come in with some real sienna on top of that. That's a drastic start. Detail smoke black in the brush. We're just gonna graze the edges of this stencil. Okay, the stencil moved a little bit. That made things random. It'd be nice if it was in frame, wouldn't it? That's pretty pretty. That looks pretty clean. That's lavender. That looks pretty good. Phalo green on the top. Phalo green turns lavender back into blue. That's pretty awesome. Colors, man. I think that's what it was missing. That looks missing something. You wanna go to Costco, fan? How could you so fun? <laughs> that oh, sounds fun. And Chick Fil A now. And Chick Fil A. Pearl white. I'm gonna cover up the gills. Then we're doing gold on the top. Okay, just the faintest following of neon chartreuse down the lateral line. Because if it wasn't there, I would wish it was. It's time for a scale reveal. Let's do the back piece first. We never do that. That is a color I've never seen before, but it's got a little bit of everything. Wow. I'm going to put the finishing touches on this. And we're going to go fishing. One sec. That is as finishing of a touch as you can get right there. Dead meat custom, man. One day! This is becoming a classic on the channel. The hard Chinese UV resin. Good thing to have right there. I'm gonna let this spin and then check where everything settles. It's setting. It was very even. I can see the glare around the gills. It's nice and even. I have to set it inside of these. It's going to leave a little bit of a mark on their sides, but whatever. It sets so much faster doing it this way than it does in that big wooden tank I built for the UV lights. There's just no way I'm going back. I'm just I'm gonna accept the tiny, tiny little divots. It's fine. Let's take a look at this tail. Finn. Mm. 
It does have nice sparkles in it, and it's pearlized. But it's just brown, which will go with this bait. I think we're ready. I've got my extreme power thick <laughs> super glue. See how this stuff does. Okay, I had to get up and run and get my pliers to screw that in because it's in so tight, so that's not going anywhere. Extreme power thick, man. Absolutely full coverage. That was really difficult to get in, but I think that makes for a pretty solid joint. Feeling good about catching big fish on this. I just squeezed that tail in there with some glue. I think that's all I'm gonna do for it. Not so psyched about this blade being able to hit the body. If I need to, I'll bend the wire up, get it away from the body. It's able to spin very freely on that ball bearing swivel though. Hoping for a spin and a swim. Confidence level 50-50. I really don't know, that's why I made it. My GoPro took a dump on me, uh, but I have a huge fish on with the bait. I might have to bank it. I snagged its tail. I let him go. I couldn't uh, get him to the bank. He was just too much of a fighter, so pulled his tail up, grabbed the lure. So let me figure out my GoPro one sec. Please excuse my videographer incompetence. I think the camera's rolling. Okay, we're at a pond now. One day failed. Just because you fail a one day doesn't mean you can't fish with it two days later and still try to make it official. And try a new blade and show you guys the action. I didn't do anything really at that other spot except snag a carp, which is negative points. Here we go. So if you look at it real close, it's swimming. It is swimming. Sometimes it doesn't though. Sometimes it's extremely stable and the body's not moving at all. That gold willow leaf blade just destroyed the top of this bait. It seems the most successful thing about this video is that I called my failure first thing. I have set myself up to fail one day. <laughs> I just immediately called it. Look at all that failure. <laughs> it's probably best never to just move on and accept that the blade smacks into the body of your bait. You should probably fix that before fishing with it for hours. This blade works great on it though. I might super glue that up. I can't clear coat it because it's jointed. We'll just put this bait away. I don't even enjoy fishing with it that much because the action isn't exactly what I wanted. Really the most you can get out of it's just like that while the spinner's spinning. And really, why wouldn't you just want a soft plastic, something with a paddle tail even? What would have been cool is a glide with the spinner, but you'll never be able to achieve that. Let's not fool ourselves. A spinner keeps things stationary. It's like a little gyroscope up there, not allowing movement. And we learned through failure. I got my testing tank up and running. We got some little, oh, sorry. Few little fellas in there even. That's actually just food, if I, so happen to put anything in there this winter. There's some super aggressive green sunfish at a pond I'm going to in a little bit. Thinking about just keeping one really aggressive of something in here and then introducing another super aggressive thing and seeing which one wins. I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> but it'd be fun to have something that might potentially hit your lure while you test it in your shop. Green sunfish would probably do that. I'll let you know if anything ever goes inside of that tank. I think that officially set me into winter mode. <laughs> I'm gonna work on some other baits. I'm even cleaning up. I'm taking stuff down. I'm trying to utilize space better. I'm preparing for the winter. Thanks for watching. On to the next bait. Secret Japanese technique. Sweet man, you don't even know what's coming. Straight into the wood. It's gonna leave a little bit of a mark. That's nothing. Big old willow blade. Mm.